Hello there. So very nice to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. And welcome everyone to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This is Rowan, a Pokemon professor here in Sinnoh. This world is widely inhabited by creatures known as- Yes, we know, my dude. I've only been doing this for about 11, 12 years now. <laughs> we humans live alongside Pokemon as friends. At times we play together, and at other times we work together. Some people use their Pokemon to battle and develop closer bonds with them. What do I do? I conduct research, so that we may learn more about these Pokemon. Now why don't you tell me a little bit- Hey, no, I want to know about that little guy right there, Munchlax. Rather than asking if we're a boy or a girl, things have progressed quite a bit in Pokemon. You can just choose a photo from this lineup of what you want your character to look like, and I think I want to go with this guy right here, even though I am quite pale. And our name shall be Orange. Yes, from the fine lands of Puerto Rico. It's a far off region, kind of like Alola actually. And this boy here is our friend. What might his name be? Of course, the default name is Barry or Marcus apparently, but I'm going to go ahead and pick a custom name for this guy and it will be none other then but <laughs> yes very mature i know i just that's what i did as a kid i would always name barry butt and it just seems to fit with uh, his personality as you guys will see soon enough as our very own tale of grand adventure is about to unfold on your journey you will meet countless pokemon and people i'm sure that along the way you'll discover many things perhaps even something about yourself now go on and smash that like button down below if you guys are excited for another Pokemon playthrough right here on the Munching Orange channel, and let's get into it. Dang, kicking things off with that intense music. Despite the exploration team's best efforts, the rare, oddly colored Pokemon eluded detection. The rumored Red Gyarados failed to appear, even fleetingly, to the crestfallen team. That's a, uh, oh, not so nice TV. I was expecting like a nice flat screen. That thing's got some depth to it still. But that concludes the special report, Search for the Red Gyarados, brought to you by Jubilife TV on Nationwide Net. See you next week, same time, same channel. Jeez, dude, it's a little early for such an intense documentary. And here we are, chibi as can be. I like the way our character's looking, with the scruffy hair, noticeably missing the hat that we typically wear at the beginning, of Diamond and Pearl because this is Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. More specifically, Brilliant Diamond, which is the game I will be mainly playing, but if there are some version differences, I'll be sure to show them off throughout the playthrough. But as you've noticed already, uh, they definitely went with the faithful approach that we've heard so much about from the trailers with the TV kind of looking a little retro and the laptop also looking straight out of 2007 when the original Diamond and Pearl came out. So I'm excited to replay through Sinnoh all over again. Let's go ahead and check out our computer. We always got a nice little potion somehow in there, which I never really thought about how they get the potion inside a computer. But I mean, how do Pokeballs work? You know, logic doesn't really seem to fit in this world. But a little notebook and pen and pencil. And of course, our favorite console, the latest and greatest Nintendo Switch. Not even the OLED model, though. Come on, bro. You got to upgrade. The X button opens a menu. All right, what do we got going on? Bag and options. First things first, always got to change that text speed over to fast. Or at least, uh, you know, if you're a good enough reader like myself. And uh, we can also change our window type, which uh, we got options. Looks like a lot of them are from the classic games. But I'm guessing maybe towards the end, we've got a couple of new ones. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't remember exactly all of them. But yeah, there we go. We got type 23 and 24. Definitely looking a little more modern. I don't know if I remember those from back in the day. And everything else should pretty much stay the same. Oh yeah, we gotta turn off that autosave. Definitely recommend it, otherwise your game might save on its own at an unfortunate timing and then you won't be able to go back. Like, say you accidentally kill a legendary and the game autosaves, then you can't go back and catch it. That'd be pretty unfortunate. Better to not have autosave and just make sure to save the game yourself and now it's time anything else going on in our room nice comfy bed oh we can hop in it actually yeah you know what guys lp is over i'm just gonna go take a nap see you guys next time
Who am I kidding? It's time for adventure! Let's go downstairs and meet our lovely mother and set off to get our first Pokemon. Eventually. But cause <laughs> that already caught me off guard. <laughs> I don't know what it was about, but he said it was an emergency. Must be important knowing him, right? Certainly not anything to do with uh, owing him money. Don't go into that tall grass, wild Pokemon might attack. It'd be okay if you had your own. Yeah, we're gonna go do that right now. Maybe a Chansey like we saw on that TV. And here we are in Twinley. Oh man, it's all coming back to me. The music, the little log cabins or houses, and this guy right here, my favorite neighbor. Technology just blows him away. I mean, now you can play with people around the world wirelessly. I'm pretty sure Diamond and Pearl also had wireless communication, but okay, fresh and free. And before we step outside, we do got to go visit our buddy, but <laughs> right into us with a big old thud. What was that about? Oh, hey, Orange. I'm going to the lake. You should come too and be quick about it. Okay, I'm finding you a million dollars if you're late. Yep, that's the butt I remember. Always going on about how much money we owe him. Oh, jeez. I forgot something. Already, bro? Come on. I'm usually the forgetful one here. Barry? A butt? Okay, I might switch off between both the official and the name we gave him, but... Uh, yes, we are looking for butt. <laughs> he was gone for a second, then he came running right back home. He just can't sit still, that boy. Reminds me much of myself as a kid. I was very, uh, restless, you could say. Running around the house, never really quite able to sit still for too long. We're going to the lake. I'll be waiting on the road and 10 million dollars now? Jeez, dude! What is this, Bitcoin just inflating over the span of a couple seconds? Alright, uh, I didn't realize Seno had progressed that much. I mean, look at this. We got a little Poketch commercial or apparently research corner. Okay. A wild Bronzor conveniently came along. Oh, it's holding something! Youch, it scratched my- what? How does a Bronzor scratch your finger? It's- it's just a big old metal circle. Okay. Uh, well. Now, it is truly time to step out into the world of Pokémon! We could check out all these houses around, but I don't think there's really anything too important. Or anybody that'll give us anything. Hey, you saw that news report that was on TV, right? You know, search for the Red Gyarados, the mysterious appearance of the furious Pokemon. Yeah, it kind of scarred me, dude. That show got me thinking. I'll bet our local lake has a Pokemon like that in it, too. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go find a Pokemon just like that. My apologies uh, if my voice sounds a little off. I have been overcoming a bit of a sore throat recently. So uh, I'm not going to be able to do all the crazy voices that I usually do for characters just because of the sickness, okay? I'm sure I'll get over it in later episodes and we'll be right back to hustling up with uh, the lake. That's right, to find the Red Gyarados. Usually those are in Johto. I don't think... What's going on here? Professor, there isn't anything out of the ordinary on the other side either. Hmm, I may have been mistaken. Something appears to be different than it was before, but fine. It's enough that we've seen the lake. Dawn, we're leaving. Professor, how are you enjoying being back in Sinnoh after being away for four years? Must be exciting again. Uh, there is one thing I can say. There are many rare kinds of Pokemon here. The region should serve us very well in regard to our studies. Where was Rowan at, though? Studying abroad, I suppose? Excuse us. Let me pass, please. Perhaps in the Gala region, judging by the little accent I decided to give him. I beg your pardon, we'll be on our way. We'll see you very soon, Don. And the professor, I guess. What was that about? I don't know, but they seem to have left something behind over in the grass, which you can kind of make out. It's a little blurry right now, but it looks kind of like a suitcase. Okay, obviously we know it's a suitcase, but I'm trying to point out the fact that this game does have quite a bit of blur going on at the top and bottom of the screen. One of the main differences, of course, with the graphics in these remakes. Well, there's a lot of differences, actually, compared to the original. It was like pixel art. Now we got fully 3D chibi models and the briefcase that those people forgot. How convenient for us. What are we supposed to do with it? 
we can try to return it, but who were they? I heard him say Professor. Oh no! Pokemon! <laughs> Whatever shall we do? If only this briefcase conveniently had Pokeballs inside of it. Let's battle using the Pokemon in them. Yep, it's time to pick our starter. And here in the Sinnoh region, we have got the Tiny Leaf Pokemon Turtwig, which is going to be your grass type. Eventually evolves into a grass and ground type. Not really spoilers considering it's a remake, but I mean, I'm going to point it out just in case someone hasn't played the games. Because next we've got the Chimp Pokemon, Chimchar, Fire, and eventually evolves into Fire and Fighting type. Personally, my favorite starter from the Sinnoh region, but I don't think I'm going to quite pick it in this playthrough. Because I pick Chimchar pretty much 90% of the time I play any Sinnoh game. And instead, we are also not going to pick the Penguin Pokemon Piplup, but I will point out that it evolves into a water steel type and makes a pretty awesome choice. There's not a lot of steel types, or well, I guess there's a decent amount, uh, but water steel, pretty good. Piplup, very cute, but I am going to be going with Turtwig. Probably my least pick starter, like whenever I do decide to play Diamond Pearl or Platinum. I don't know why I always pick Chimchar or Piplup. I don't think I've actually ever done a playthrough with Turtwig, so we're going to do it this time around. Let's go, little guy, taking on a couple robunctious starly i don't think that's a word excuse my brain as it warms up into the let's play mode but i believe rambunctious as in rowdy and uh excited to battle here we got tackle and withdraw withdraw i think raises your defense so of course we're gonna go with the tackle just take this thing out as quick as we can and uh we can't quite catch this little starly yet because we don't have pokeballs of course the ones in the briefcase belong to little turtwig here you can't just uh clone him i mean you could back in the day at least in uh, emerald i remember i used to <laughs> do a little bit of pokemon cloning your turtwig totally rocked but my chimchar was way tougher than yours of course this man picked the starter that beats ours they were other people's pokemon but we had to use him those people won't mind will they my question is what would these kids have done if this briefcase didn't happen to contain pokeballs with starters of all things inside them the professor would have been furious if I'd lost the briefcase. You two wouldn't happen to have stolen anything from it, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, my bad. Oh my gosh, you did? What's the professor gonna say? This is so not good. I'll take the briefcase for now. And not the Pokemon? What? Okay, Dan. What was that? Very, I mean, but. Come on. You seem to be more lost than I am, bro. It's not good. If we get attacked by another Pokemon, we might be in trouble. So, I guess we're keeping the starters for now. And Butt is leading the charge for some reason. I, I can handle myself, bro. I don't need no guide in these parts. I know we have to go return the Pokemon. They're not ours. But I wanted to spend a little more time with this little guy. Yeah, so do I. Uh, one weird thing you might have noticed there is sometimes when a cutscene ends, the character model will automatically point in a certain direction, like... We face the lake, but no, we're supposed to go down this way and meet the professor who's uh, staring at us. I wonder why. Hmm. I heard from Dawn that you use your Pokemon. Let me see them, please. Turtwig and Chimchar. Hmm, I see. So that's how it is. Dawn, I'm going back to my lab. That's it? So I guess they're ours now, huh? I think you should visit our lab later. Okay, see ya! Quite a brief introduction there. And she's gone. Alright, free starter Pokemon? I'm not complaining. What was all that cra- Bro, seriously? I mean, if he was angry, he could have just yelled at us or whatever. And didn't he want his Pokemon back? Yeah, I guess not. Might as well keep him now, right? After all, you did want some more time with the little guy, and I definitely want some more time with our Turtwig, who has yet to... Oh my... What, what was that on the cookies? Wow, I can't believe that happened to you. Am I ever glad that both you and Butt are unharmed? The professor you mentioned is most likely Professor Rowan of Sandgem. I've heard that he's well known for his studies on Pokemon, but also quite intimidating. Orange, I think you need to visit him. You need to properly explain why you had no choice but eat... I think he knows at this point, considering he let us keep them. I know. Orange, put these on. 
Oh. I thought she was gonna give us the hat, but... I mean, running shoes are probably better, right? Definitely more practical and useful. Okay, let's read the instructions. Tilt the left stick firmly and dash about like never before. Isn't that just nifty? So yeah, in this game, if you use the D-pad on your controller or Joy-Con, uh, you can walk, and if you hold down the B button, it's like your old school Pokemon. You walk in a grid, uh, but if you use the analog stick, you can actually walk all around, diagonal, and however you want, and it will run by default, which is pretty convenient, because sometimes you're gonna wanna be on that gridlock, so you just use the D-pad. Uh, but for the most part, we're definitely gonna be using the analog stick and just running our way right on over to Route 201 in our first patch of grass, which will already contain our first wild encounter. The god himself, Bidoof, has appeared! <laughs> It had to be Bidoof, man. I mean, it could have been a Starly, technically. Or, I don't know, sometimes in Pokemon games, the first encounter is scripted. As in, like, it will 100% of the time be the same Pokemon. So, for example, in X and Y, I think, uh, the first encounter was always a Pidgey. Or maybe it's a different Pokemon. I don't quite remember anymore. But the point is, uh, in this route, you can find Bidoof or Starly. But we just happened to find the greatest Pokemon of all time. Or at least the best Pokemon in the old school Sinnoh games because it can learn almost every single HM, especially when it evolves. I'm pretty sure it learns like six out of eight of them. But in this game, of course, uh, that is no longer an issue because HMs can be used straight from the. Hey, I'm trying to talk to you, man. Pokemon lurk in the top. Yeah, uh, we kind of just learned that ourselves. But as I was saying, HMs in this game you can use straight from the Poketch, which is something we're going to get probably later in this episode, or maybe in the next one. Uh, before we move on, I believe there's actually a hidden item somewhere around here. And I don't want to spend too much time looking for it, but aha! It's a potion! How did I know about that? I guess I'm some kind of pro or something. <laughs> like I said, I've been playing Pokemon here on YouTube for like over 10 years now, and uh, on my own since I was a kid. I've been playing since Pokemon Ruby Sapphire, Although, I kind of have vague memories of playing Pokemon Crystal on my cousin's Game Boy, so even before that, like 1998 or something like that, I've been playing these games. So, I know a thing or two, maybe, sometimes. Uh, like the fact that Starly here is going to be our early bird in this game. Of course, every generation has, like, the early flying type bird, usually, Pokemon. Actually, is there any generation that the early flying type isn't a bird. Pretty sure they're always birds, which is why they call it the early bird. Catches the experience in this case. Uh, there, there's no worms in this route, but a lot of generations actually have worm Pokemon early on too. Uh, here in the Sinnoh region, I think you can find Wormpole, but also Burmy is kind of like a worm. And this nice lady works in the Pokemart and will also give you another potion or potions pretty sure that used to be just one in the original games but uh, maybe now she gives you a couple of them and uh, no I didn't mean to do that oh we can't even talk to him from below the cliff or ledge or whatever they're called and of course I meant to actually try to talk to this nice young lad here who will tell us about the ledge that are a one-way shortcut so yeah once you jump down them can't go back uh, but we don't need to go back right now. We're moving on to Sand Gem Town and Dawn. Long time no see. Please come with me. Well, where's our boy, Barry? Uh, I mean, whoa. Yeah, that's gonna happen a lot. That old guy, he's not so scary so much as he is totally out there. Ah, uh, doesn't matter. I'm out of here. See you later. No smell you later. Your friend sure seems to be really impatient. You don't say. Well, anyway, uh, let's go inside. Yeah, let's ignore the boy that clearly needs some help and uh, check out the lab. Oh man, that music. It's getting to me, guys. I know you can't see me right now, but I have a little tear coming down my left eye. Finally, you've come. Orange, was it? Let me see that Pokemon again. Hmm, I see. This Pokemon seems to be rather happy. Alrighty then, I'll give that turtle to you as a gift. Now that it's yours, would you like to give it a nickname? Why yes, I do enjoy nicknaming my Pokemon, but I 
don't really have anything in mind for little Turtwig here. Actually, something just came to me, and that is Bonsai. As when it evolves, Torterra does have a whole ass tree on its head. Not quite a Bonsai, it's a little bigger than that, but I feel like the name is pretty fitting. Your friend Butt told me what happened at the lake. I heard you battled very well, despite it being your first time. And from what I can see, there is a growing bond between you and that Pokemon, though it is still young. That's why I would like to entrust you with Turtwig! Well, thank you, sir! I was pretty sure that we were gonna keep it already, but... Nice to get some con for me. Oh, man. So it's kind of awkward with Dawn standing back there. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the main topic. Yes, yes. My name is Rowan. I study Pokemon. First of all, I want to know exactly what kinds of Pokemon live in Sinnoh. To do so, it is necessary to collect data using the Pokedex. This is what I wish to ask of you. I want to entrust you with this Pokedex. Will you use it to record data on all the Pokemon in Sinnoh? Yes! Good answer! Our quest officially begins! With that very high-tech device, it will automatically record data on every kind. I ask that you go everywhere and meet every kind of Pokemon in this region. And he's not kidding about that. This is one of the few Pokemon games where you don't necessarily need to catch them, but as long as you see every single Pokemon in Sinnoh, you get a pretty nice reward at the end of the game. So when Professor says, go and meet all the Pokemon of Sinnoh, he really means it. I've lived for 60 long years, and even now I get a thrill when I'm with them. Now you should know there are countless Pokemon in this world. That means there are just as many thrills waiting out there. Now go! Your grand adventure begins right now! Or does it? Because Dawn has to let us know that she's got Piplup. If you would have chosen Piplup at the lake, we'd have the same Pokemon! I don't know about that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Dawn. I also help the professor add pages to the decks. So, in a sense, I'm just like you. I just got a little head start on you, that's all. You saying I'm slow? I'll be happy to teach you things. Glad to meet ya, Orange! And now, things truly begin. We got our starter nicknamed and ready to go. So it's time to move on to Dawn. What do you want now? I've got a bit more experience than you as a trainer and as a professor's assistant. Well, wait up, flex on us, come on. Follow me. To more nostalgic music. Red building, Pokemon Center, yada yada. We all know what's going on. Blue building, Pokemon, buy all the items, Pokeballs and things you might need. But what else is Dawn about to show us? Oh, that's right. Don't you need to let your family know that you're going to be helping Professor Rowan with the Pokedex? You may need to travel pretty far, so I think you should let someone know. But before you go, heal up at the Pokemon Center. It'll be a lot less scary that way. Okay, bye now! <laughs> yeah, so we gotta go uh, visit our mother, our only known relative, because of course in every Pokemon game, you don't have a dad. Or at least, uh, they're not mentioned. I mean... The character could have a father, obviously, you had to be born from two parents, unless you were adopted, but even then, l let's not get into the, the details here. The point is, we've got to go visit our loving mother and uh, let her know what's going on. Are you and your Pokemon feeling healthy? Take a quick rest. Yeah, we don't need no Pokemon Center when we got mom's healthy gift. What's up? Wow, Professor Rowan asked you to do something that big? Okay, go for it. Your mom's got your back. Oh, I know. I've got something that you'll find useful. Uh, I don't actually know what that is. Definitely wasn't in the original Diamond and Pearl games. Take a look at that guidebook. When you're curious about something or have questions during your adventure, you may find your answer. Gee, a journey full of adventure. I envy you, kiddo. Plus, you're not alone. You have your Pokemon with you. I wish I could go instead. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, I was about to put you in the Pokeball and bring you along with us. I'm actually always been curious if Pokeballs would work on humans, because, again, I don't want to get into the... Hello? Excuse me, is my little butt here? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's not. Then, he must have left already. What to do? That boy shouted about going on an adventure, then he bolted. He's so headstrong and reckless, I at least wanted him to take this. Not to worry, Orange will deliver it to him, won't you? Yes. Don't you worry, your pretty little butt. I've got you. 
with the parcel. Definitely reminding me of the original Pokemon journey in Kanto where you gotta deliver Oak's parcel. I guess this time we've got Butt's parcel. Bye bye, enjoy your adventure. And off we go. But first, you're forgetting something important. What? Ah, of course! Our hat! We really had to see it three times back to back. <laughs> that hat always did suit you well. Now, off you go! You know it's important when they play the scene three times back to back like in an anime. But I wasn't expecting it for getting our hat. That was definitely interesting. But yes, now we are a true Pokemon trainer. We got our scarf, we got our hat. And we've got no wild Pokemon encounters, thankfully, got a little lucky there. Uh, but before we leave Sand Gem Town, that thing you've got is a Pokedex, ain't it? Now you're off to see y'all- okay, not that guy. Uh, to the south of this town, uh, we've got a little beach, I believe, and possibly an item to grab. Antidote! Probably not gonna need it for a little while, because I don't think there's any, like, poison or bug Pokemon coming up until, like, Eterna Forest. Uh, but here we've also got Dawn's house. I don't think there's really anything too important to grab there just yet. But, uh, just fun to point out that her house is there. And she do got some family looking out for her too. That's right, I haven't shown you how to catch a Pokemon. Oh, I mean, I've got a little bit of experience with it already. Not to brag or anything, but like, I kind of already did brag about how long I've been here on YouTube. A little bit of a boomer. When it comes to Poketubing at this point, Dawn, I think we know how to catch a Pokemon, but I'll let you do your thing, girl. Just pound on that Bidoof real quick. Sorry, you're not the one uh, doing the, the pounding. It's Piplup, technically. Don't want to make things weird here, but uh, once its HP is low, get ready for that Pokeball. I would personally have gone for another pound, but considering it's a Bidoof, it probably catches even at full health, but... Yeah, normally, you know, the weaker the Pokemon is, the higher the chances of catching it will be. So you want to get it into that red HP. But Dawn is confident enough that Bidoof will be caught, even at half health. Good luck using that on your team. See, isn't that neat? Actually, it's better to lower your target's HP more than I- Oh, wow. Okay. It's important to get the HP as low as possible. A healthy Pokemon is very difficult to catch. Well, it kind of depends on the Pokemon. Uh, they all have different catch rates, which uh, means how difficult or easy they are to catch. And Bidoof pretty much has the highest catch rate possible. So yeah, even at full HP, pretty easy to catch one of those dudes. And in fact, we might actually just catch one ourselves or not, because we didn't run into nothing. We're running right into our first trainer battle though. I happen to be a Pokemon trainer too. Our eyes met, so we must battle! I don't know why every time I see the first youngster, I'm reminded of that Smosh video of Pokemon in real life. I don't know if you guys know Smosh at this point. They were kind of like the first big YouTube channel that I watched, and at one point they were the biggest YouTube channel. And uh, at some point they did like Pokemon in real life, which are like some of my favorite YouTube videos of all time, even still. They're so funny. If you haven't seen them, definitely check it out. One funny thing to point out is, uh, oh, there it is again. My character just moved to face that way on its own. It's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if it's a bug or a glitch, but speaking of bugs and glitches, in the base version of this game, the trainer battle music was actually a little different. Uh, if you guys don't know, there is actually a day one update, as in like as soon as you buy the game or download it from the eShop, uh, you can go into the home menu and hit plus button on the little icon and uh, you should update to version 1.1 because there's a lot of bug fixes and mainly with the music that you're listening to right now this glorious trainer battle remix uh, was actually not quite so polished in the base version of the game so especially if you buy a cartridge like a physical cartridge for these games definitely connect to the internet and update it because yeah there's quite a couple of bug fixes and things and uh your battle theme might sound a little different if you're on version 1.0. Honestly, I'm just excited to be playing Sinnoh all over again. I, I really do like the chibi graphics. You could say they've grown on me, unlike the chibis themselves. They, they shrunk down. But uh, it's been, what, seven years since Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out? It's been uh, quite a while since we've had a Pokemon remake. 
and although I would have liked to see some of the crazier features that we saw introduced in Omega Ruby, like Mega Evolutions, the soaring in the post game, I mean, honestly, we don't know what's in the post game of these games yet, unless you saw all the leaks, in which case, uh, there's some pretty crazy things from the few that I've seen, so I am very excited to be playing this and to get to that post game, see exactly what is new and what has changed, but at least for the main story, I think it should be pretty much like 90% the same as the original Diamond and Pearl, and just like in those games, we've got ourselves a Shinx! All of its fur dazzles if dangerous sense, it flees while the foe is momentarily blinded. The Flash Pokemon, which is kind of a perfect name for it actually, but it is a female. I guess there's Jessie Quick, but I don't really like that name. So I'll go with Zip, because it zips right past you in a zap or a flash. But yeah, that's going to be our first Pokemon, uh, or first one that we've actually caught since uh, we got Turtwig gifted to us. But in this route, there's a couple of more encounters that we can get. And I don't know if I'm actually going to end up using Shinx all the way through, but a lot of these early Pokemon can be very helpful. Oh, speaking of, here we've got another Shinx from Mr. Logan. But uh, the first gym is definitely Rock-type in the Sinnoh region. So I think we should be okay with just little bonsai here, we don't really need to catch anything else, at least until the second gym, which is going to be grass type, in which case, you know, a starly wouldn't hurt. And speaking of hurt, uh, bonsai is not looking too good, and neither is zip actually. <laughs> so we're definitely going to use a potion here, don't want to black out on like our third battle of the game, that would be quite unfortunate. And a little thunder shock coming in! I don't know if zip actually has that already, I didn't check her moves exactly, but uh, wow, we really need one more leafage? Okay, fine, we'll go with the tackle, bro. That's another thing, actually, that uh, in the original games, I don't think you learned leafage, because it didn't exist yet. It was Razor Leaf instead, or maybe Vine Whip. I don't know if Turtwig gets Vine Whip. Anyway, you don't learn that until, I think, a little bit higher of level, uh, but recent generation starter Pokemon learn a move of their type a little earlier, like leafage, ember, bubble, or whatever. Some Pokemon only appear in the morning, and some only come out at night. I'm gonna keep waiting right here till I've seen every last one of them. I don't know if this was the first time. No, I think uh, Gold and Silver Crystal also had a day and night cycle, so you could run into Pokemon based on the time of day that you're playing. But one thing to keep in mind is you cannot change your Switch's time. Or well, technically you can go into the settings and change your time, but I do not recommend it because certain events like the Honey Trees and, for example, Drifloon, which appears only on Fridays, if you go into your Switch's system settings and change the time, it won't actually work. It'll instead lock all time-based events for 24 hours, so I definitely do not recommend doing that, and instead just being nice and patient. Uh, this game is releasing on a Friday, so if you can somehow speedrun your way to the Valley Windworks, you'll find yourself a special Pokemon over there. I'm definitely going to try to get there as soon as I can, uh, because your boy actually happened to get the game a little bit early this time around. A couple of days only, so by the time we get to Eterna City, should probably be Friday, and maybe we can get ourselves a little Drift Loon there, but now we've made it to Jubilife, and Dawn is ready to catch some Pokemon! Um, I think you'd feel a lot safer if you were to catch some more. In Jubilife, there's the Trainer School, which, well, you know, you should visit it. You'll get some tips on Pokemon. Bro, is she really trying to say we suck right now? <laughs> How rude. Did I not catch that Starly? I definitely meant to catch the Starly, but I think I fainted it on accident. Ah, it's okay. We don't really want a Starly on our team, but oh, this is nice. We get a little alternate angle of Jubilife, the city of joy. How nice, dude. And we saw some kids over there trading some Pokemon wirelessly. Oh, those are switches. I thought they were DS's for a second. I'm trading with my buddy. You guys want to trade with me? I don't got no friends. <laughs> I need someone to trade with, please. Hello! Do you know much about Pokemon? Uh, kind of. I see! I imagine you wouldn't see the need to visit the trainer school then. But do visit if you have the time. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to go visit. But first, we got to go heal our Pokemon. And here we've got our first look at the Pokemon Center in the new Chibi Sinnoh. You might notice 
uh, the PC in the corner over there. That nice blue little electronic screen thing. Might look a little bit weird to some of you newer kids. Used to those iPads or whatever, but uh, this is what a PC looks like in the Pokemon world. I don't think we have them so much anymore. Well, there is the Rotom PC actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but in these games, you can either use the actual PC or you can uh, access it from anytime, anywhere from your Pokemon menu. Uh, but one really cool thing I've noticed is we got a couple of new wallpapers. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, check these out. Space, Backyard, Nostalgic, probably one of my favorites. We got Torchic, which is kind of interesting. Could there be a little Torchic maybe later in the game? The starter trio from Sinnoh, uh, Pikachu, the Legendaries, Team Galactic, and these right here are probably my favorite of them all. We've got a, quite a lot actually of Platinum box backgrounds, including a very creepy Team Galactic, Krogunk, just uh, <laughs> enjoying the vibe. We got Giratina, so ominous. Another nostalgic wallpaper. Uh, and then, I mean, the other ones are all right. I definitely like this nostalgic one though. So I'm gonna set that for box one. And uh, since we don't really have more than six Pokemon right now, probably not gonna use the box for a while. Uh, but just in case you don't know, if you go into the Pokemon menu here, uh, never mind. I guess we don't actually have access to the wireless box just yet, so good thing I showed that off. That's that's how you get access to your other Pokemon. At least for now. Later on, like I said, you'll definitely have access to them anytime, anywhere. But now that we've healed up, let's head into the trainer school and wrap up this first episode. I don't know how long exactly it's been going, but I'm thinking each episode will be around 40-ish minutes. And here we've got, but did you come to study too? I went ahead and memorized everything on the blackboard. After all, it's the trainer's job to avoid having their precious Pokemon heard in battle, right? So what brings you here? You've got some for me. Oh, I kind of forgot that I did actually. <laughs> What's this? Score! A town map! Huh? Well, why are there two in here? I like it a lot, but I don't need two. Here, Orange, you take one. I feel like Dora all of a sudden with the map. <laughs> According to the town map, I guess Orberg City is where I should be going next. There's a gym, so it'd be perfect for raising the Pokemon I just caught. Well, I'm on the road to becoming the greatest trainer of all time. See you around. Kind of thought we might have to battle him there, but I don't think that's coming until a little bit further ahead. But what is on this blackboard, actually? Status? Oh. Okay. I mean, I'll teach you guys about those as they come up. It's fine. I'm more of a hands-on kind of learner, more of a visual kind of guy. You know how they have like the auditory and visual learning. I was definitely always more of the visual type. So when we get, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We learned about types, uh, grass weak to fire. Okay, we know all that too. But uh, speaking of these two right here, I believe want to battle us and will give us a nice reward for taking them down. But if I remember correctly, or at least back in the original games, they are a little bit tougher than those trainers we fought on Route 1. And that's because they've got Abra, which uh, isn't necessarily all that tough actually, but I, I don't know. I I let's just hit it with a Leaf Edge and see how much damage we do. Oh, the Charge Beam. Well, if you had Piplup, you would kind of be in some trouble right now because that is an electric move. But since we've got Turtwig, that does nothing and we one-shot it. Alright, I, I don't know why I was saying that that would be tough. Because it definitely was not. But uh, you might have noticed there, or maybe in the earlier battle too, that now that we've got Zip on the team, the EXP all is turned on. So all of the Pokemon in your party will gain experience from every single battle. And uh, that's one thing that a couple of people were not too excited about because... It wasn't in the original game, like the EXP share was, but you could only put it on one Pokemon and they would gain like half of the experience, but uh, because this is a modern Pokemon title, they got some of the modern features updated in it, including the EXP all, which I honestly don't mind too much because it allows you to train up like multiple Pokemon without having to switch in and out or having some of them fall behind. And yeah, it can make the game a little bit easier, but 
I've heard in this game at least it doesn't become so easy that it gets boring, but it still would have been nice to at least have the option to turn it off for players that want more of a challenge. Personally though, I don't really mind the EXP all, because it gives me the opportunity to like train up more than just six Pokemon, which I am definitely thinking of doing in this playthrough. I want to show off as many of the Sinnoh Pokemon as we can. So for now we've got Bonsai and Zip, and I totally should have caught that Starly, but I didn't. So uh, maybe in the next route, we can get one for ourselves, but that's two Abras down. I'm completely impressed by how tough you are. If you'd like, talk to my friend and get some technical machines. Oh, this is another big change, actually. I'm glad that this is all coming up on episode one. Got all the big changes to the remakes, because uh, TMs are now back to being single use. So as you'll see there, it says TM10S or TM10s, as in multiple TM10s, which is workup. It'll raise attack and special attack at the same time. But remember, TM is good for only one use. Don't waste it which is why he gave us a couple of them. I'm not actually sure how many, but we'll check right now that we've got three. Now that we're done with the trainer school, I think that's a good spot to end off the episode. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy it and stay tuned for the next episode coming up very soon.